Hello everybody! Today I'm going to do a brief presentation on how to utilize the Pearson Realize online access in a third grade classroom. I'm going to include instructions about how to assign items to your students for them to use at home for help with, help with homework and for the parents to help and also information about how I use it in my classroom for student access and for instructional purposes. I'm going to go ahead and um, assume that everybody already has created an account. If you don't have a login credentials yet, you can just ask me and I can give you the instructions for creating that. But once you do have your login information, you will use Internet Explorer. Although it is not my preferred browser, it is the one that seems to be most compatible with the Pearson Realize account. So you open your browser, go to www.pearsonrealize.com. Go ahead and log in with your account. Unfortunately, it does not save your username and password, so you have to log in um, every day, or if you're away from your computer for a while, you have to re-log in, which is a little irritating. But, anyway, the first step, once you log in, would be to create a class. Um, it's pretty simple. You just click Create Classes, um, you give it a name, choose an icon, choose your program, which for us will be third grade, and add their student name, username, and passwords. Um, they have some specifics about how they want their username and password formatted, and they'll walk you through it. If you type something that's incorrect, it won't let you proceed. So you can add more rows all the way up to however many students you have. I had 23 kids this year. It took me, um, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 minutes tops to do this. And once you have that, again, you can go to your programs. You'll click onto your program, and then you're able to assign things. So I'm going to start out first with what I do at the beginning of each new topic. I'm going to be beginning topic four, starting second quarter. So I'm going to get a jump on the game and assign them some things to my students. The first thing I assign is the topic four readiness test. This is an, um, an assessment. You can have the kids take it on pencil paper, and then you could use Mastery Connect, or you could hand score it um, if you wanted to do that. You would just click Customize. Oh, darn it, I already assigned this test. Anyway, I'm sorry, I ran into a little snafu. If you wanted to print it out, you would just click that Customize button. It would pop the test up. You could choose the questions you want, save it, print it, and then you could hand um, give that to the students, or you can just assign it for them to take online. Um, I obviously have already done that because I did get a jump start on this before I recorded the video. So anyway, um, you assign the topic readiness test, it'll score it for you. The kids just log in, they take, they answer each question, it is multiple choice. And I use that information to tell me which kids are not ready to be successful in topic four. It allows me then to pull a small intervention group to give some extra support to before each lesson. And they really get a kick out of it because they think they're kind of experts and they're a lot more successful than if they hadn't received interventions beforehand. All right, you can also assign the topic for vocabulary cards. The parents kind of appreciate having those at home in case there are some words or terms that they're unfamiliar with. You can also assign components of each lesson. The Daily Common Core Review is just assigning a screenshot of the worksheet, so I don't ever do that. I'm thinking maybe for older students, they could work off of a screen and record their answers on a separate paper, and that may be beneficial. Not so much for third grade. Instead, I skip all this stuff down here because, again, it's just screenshots of the actual worksheets. What I do assign is the visual develop the concept. You just click that. You can click a start date and an end date. I know I'm going to be teaching lesson 4.1 on the first day back from spring break. Uh, it doesn't really matter when the end date is. I usually give them a couple of weeks. Otherwise, they get some sort of alert message that says that oops, you have pending assignments. You choose the class that you want to assign it to, and it's done. And since there are only five lessons in Topic 4, it'll take me just a couple of minutes to click Assign. Start date, this one will be on the 21st of October. Again, I'll give them a couple weeks to access that. And if I do end up getting behind in class because maybe I needed an extra day or two to teach a lesson, uh, I don't feel like it hurts them to have access to those things ahead of time. Alright, so once I get through assigning things to my students, 
then they have access to those at home. They can get on them if I have student computers and they're struggling with their independent work. They can re-watch the animated video that we had explored in class. Then what I do before I prepare for each lesson is again I go into my program and I like to have the e-text ready to be pulled up. When I do my guided practice um, I always pick the white textbook because that is the less, uh, the version we have this year. Last year it was a black textbook, which is not the Realize edition. Anyway, and I open that in a new window, and then you can see up here I have my e-text. I like having this on the smart board, like I said, so I can do the guided practice questions online or on the smart board with the students. I go to topic four over here on the left. You can click the little arrow. Um, this can give you just a little introductory thing, some vocabulary lesson. The next page always has that um, problem-based interactive learning. I like to pull those up on the smart board each day so that students can see those as they work. Um, I have them work with little marker boards on the carpet with their cooperative learning groups. So those are there for each day. And then after I'm finished teaching lesson 4.1, I have the guided practice right here. And you can click this little projector icon. It makes it a little bit bigger. And you can do the work right here. You can model for the students how you want their answers to look in their journals or whiteboards, however you have them record their answers. They can view the independent practice. And sometimes I even skip ahead these problem solving ones, especially earlier in the year. They're not quite ready to tackle some of those on their own, so I might do a couple of those as an example and then not assign them or even assign them again when they're ready for their paired or independent work. I find it really useful, like I said, to have that already open. So then when I go back to my other tab to the access, the teacher access, whoops, I did not mean to do that. I go back to my programs and then I can go to my actual lesson. It should be topic four. And lesson 4.1. You got your develop the concept, your little visual bridge. Oh, well, that's nice. I guess I'll have to look into that one before uh, cycle break or <laughs> fall break is over. Let's see if 4.2 is working. That might be a tech support issue that the Pearson folks are working through right now. Huh, all right then. Well, that's not cool. Of course, when I want to do my recording, things are not working. Let's just go back. I know today I used lesson 3.5 and it was operational. Just to show you an example. There we go. And then you have your little animated lesson with the little guy that my kids so love. They love to dance to the music that goes online. And it's not working. Well, anyway, we must be having some issues right now. But I hope um, that overall I have given you a little bit of information about what is available on the Pearson website. Um, there are also the Game Center. That's kind of fun. You can do some games on the smart board. It always starts with whatever grade level you are using, but then it has the other grade levels always below it. Like kindergarten, one, two, three, four, five, six. Those are usually pretty smart board friendly. You got a glossary, you have math tools um, if you needed maybe some counters that you wanted to use on the smart board or some place value blocks. There's a number line. And these are always kind of neat to use on the smart board or give the kids access to also. Pretty cool. Anyway, I like I said, I hope that you have a good idea about what the website has to offer you. I would be happy to answer any questions or provide any further tutorials. And thank you for watching. Have a great night.